Ooh. Hi everyone, this is Zof. You are watching Simply Skating, no title required. Hold on a second, I'm gonna change all of your worlds. Okay, there we go. Ah, so, I was actually um, the same place. <laughs> moved everybody around. I like being on the bottom. So hi, this is, <laughs> this is Simply Skating. <laughs> No title required. Um, my name is Zoph and I'm one of the co-hosts and joining me tonight as co-host is the always awesome, amazing, fun, frivolous Fiona. Thanks for joining me tonight, Fiona. Anytime. <laughs> and uh, we're going to get to our special guest in a minute. But first, I have to do the Zoph things that I do which is make sure that we're actually streaming and we are so yay that okay first of all simply skating no title required is a show dedicated to people who are not peers or landed or court baron and baronesses this is about regular folk in the sca because there's more of them than anybody else and they have more to teach us than anybody else does as far as i'm concerned and i was watching during the pandemic all these shows were like we're talking to duke bob and duchess bobette and you know all these peers master and mistress and everybody and i was like what about regular people can we just have a show where we talk to regular people so lucas and i were like yes and we made the show happen so lucas is a poop he's not here but we get his much better half tonight being fiona uh, we are always looking for guests for Simply Skating No Title Required. On our Facebook page, we have a form that you can fill out um, to recommend a guest for us. And that is how we found tonight's guest. She was recommended to us on the form. Welcome, Jenna. Welcome, Hello, Jenna. Zof. Hello, Fiona. How are you? <laughs> We're good. All right, let's read Jenna Child Slayer's bio. Her persona is a 14th century generic wench. There's a persona story which is terribly outdated and basically explains why she was participating in the things she did in her early years in the SCA. We will talk about that. She's been in the SCA East Kingdom since January 1998. Her first event was Kingdom Twelfth Night. She spent most of that time in the canton of Lion's End, Crown Province of Osgard. Starting out, I said that wrong, didn't I? Oostgard. Oostgard. Starting out as a merchant and archer, she's tried all sorts of things since then. She's a crafts dabbler, bard, and voice herald, and has a good many years of welcoming newcomers and working with them from teaching how to make basic garb to connecting them with the folks who have their shared interests. In the last few years, most of the classes she teaches have been adapted for online, notably Penzik 101, which I've actually seen that posted somewhere, didn't I? I swear I did. Probably. So, it usually makes it to the Penzik Facebook, the newcomers page, and most of the kingdom pages. All right. So let's jump right in. Tell us, Jenna, how you found the SCA. So I originally encountered the SCA as a demo at a local medieval Ren Fair run by a Unitarian church in the area and as a demo at a local science fiction fantasy convention, which at the time was the largest fan run convention in the Northeast. Uh, unfortunately, they have fallen apart since. Um, but yes, uh, and the church after many, many years retired its festival. But I eventually managed to get in contact with a friend who said, oh, you're going to love this. I went to this thing called Penzik. I'm coming up to visit you over the winter. And there's an event right near your house. We're going. <laughs> and I said, OK. And he made a point of introducing me to a couple of other local folks that he had met via Penzik. And we all went to this event and I had a fantastic time and they haven't been able to get rid of me since. So what At, was it like having Twelfth Night as your first event? Um, I had no idea what I was doing. So at, at that point, that was pre-internet and it was much more difficult to get involved in the SCA at the time. Um, 
it sort of depended on who you did or didn't know if you happened to stumble across a practice. Uh, Ustgard, and by the way, the common pronunciation is Ustgard. There is a correct pronunciation, which most of us don't use with the umlaut and the wiggle over one of the letters, and I don't really understand it. I am not a linguist. Um, at the time, though, Ustgard had a practice in Union Square Park in Manhattan. And so they were sort of a, a stop on the tour bus. People would just sort of walk through the middle of the fighters randomly. Um, oh yeah, I, I saw it myself. <laughs> it was it was something. No matter how many marshals you have and other people playing safety chain, it's not enough. Um, so it it took me a little while to find the SCA once I had heard about it. And um, so the, the kingdom event I went to, I had no idea what I was doing. I did have an outfit. It was interestingly constructed by a former roommate. Um, and I had a great time. I had no clue what I was doing. I didn't know anything about what was coming up on the feast. I, turned out there were a few folks there that I knew through my younger sister who had gone to college with them. So I knew them as my sister's friends. And so it was great. I walked in and I saw a couple of familiar faces and they started introducing me to people and we were hanging out and having a great time. The feast, I remember it being delicious. I don't remember what we ate. And I remember that the table I was at won an East Kingdom award for um, the, the way they had, you know, all matching tableware and candelabras. And uh, I, I don't remember what it's called. This award has sort of come and gone over the years. Uh, some years it happens, some years it doesn't. For a number of years, the trophy piece had been lost. But I had a great time and there was a post revel afterwards and I had a great time and I kept coming back. What, what, what keeps you coming back? Uh, primarily the people, but also I like to do things. I like to try new crafts. Penzik is heaven for me with all the classes. Um, I don't necessarily want to commit to a craft on an ongoing basis. Uh, for example, I've taken the Pasanke class at Penzik probably six or eight times by now. The teacher calls me her repeat offender. <laughs> and I go back, I'm happy to pay my materials fee, use her equipment, use her dyes. I bring the handout back with me every time. I don't need a new handout. And I end up helping the people around me if they need help as well. Um, the most recent time I did it, I had gotten my hands on some wild duck eggs that were part of a culling that was done by a conservation group that I had blown out. And so she taught me how to prepare the eggs. Wow. And then I used those for the dyeing. So you, you, get your, you get your Pasanke fix every, once a year at Penzik and you never want to do it again until the next year. Pretty much. That's fascinating. Not even at Easter time? You don't want to <laughs> do the eggs again? <laughs> no, not even at Easter time. Um, I've, I've taken a silversmithing class, one where we made a wax tablet book. Um, gosh, what else have I done? All sorts of things. It's just fun. I tried tatting. Never again. <laughs> What's tatting? Tatting is a lace making technique. I believe Ooh. it's technically out of period. But there was a class at Penzik. I happened to find a tatting shuttle at a yard sale locally. <laughs> and I went, oh, I'll just take the class. Not for you. <laughs> it, it really wasn't. Um, but I got to try it. You know, I, I think I spent a quarter on the shuttle. 
and I invested a couple of hours in the class and it, it was fascinating. I had fun trying it. Tying knots in string is not my thing. Right. Okay. So I just, I just refound my Kumahimo, um, whatever it's called disc. Yes. So I've decided I'm going to get back into Kumahimo cause I'm kind of over knitting. Like I knit so that I don't eat and don't smoke. Um, that doesn't really work. I eat and I still vape. Um, but anyway, so, um, but I was like, maybe if I do Kumihimo, I'll have something to do with my hands. So what do you do? Like, what's your crafty thing that you're doing right now? So currently I'm making little stuffed dragons. Um, I, donate some to the toy box. In the past, I've donated them to a mundane homeless shelter because they're a, a small pocket-sized toy that the kids can take with them. I bring them to barter events. I trade them with friends. Um, I just recently got this really cute little knitted kitten. Look at that. In exchange for a dragon. I can show you the dragon too, if you'd like. Yeah, I'd love to see Absolutely. the dragon. Um, I've also done Kumihimo. Um, so I've, I've been making dragons. Wow. Oh yes, Look at them. <laughs> um, this is one of the ones that I really particularly like. Look I don't know. That. Okay. There we can see the flame print on the yeah. highlight oh, piece. It's a little, a little dark in here. Uh, let's see. I have a lighter colored one here. Look at that. And wow. the wings. Is that... Is that felt or is that it's, just fabric or what? It's just felt. It's oh God, felt so a little cute. bit of <laughs> stuffing and a little bit of embroidery floss. And how long does it take you to make each one? Um, including cutting out the pieces, approximately two hours each. Wow. That's a you great thing about putting a catnip in there, making little cat toys. Not at two hours each to make, and there really isn't a way to effectively do them on a sewing machine. But I've I've done some kumihimo. <laughs> wow. Uh, this is what I have left. It's, uh, I... I've gifted a bunch away. I've brought it to, again, Barter Town at Penzik. Um, these these are the things that got me through the isolation of COVID without completely losing my mind at work. <laughs> so that's the second time you've mentioned Barter Town. And I've yeah. heard of it, but I've never been. So can you tell our listeners what Barter Town is and how it works? So Barter Town is primarily a Facebook group that is meant for trading things. One man's trash is another man's treasure. Uh, it is intended to be SCA related. What is defined as SCA related is fairly loose because, for example, camping equipment is SCA related. Mm -hmm. Um Annually at Penzik is the largest single gathering in person that I'm aware of. It is held in the Great Hall at Penzik, which is a big open barn if you haven't been to that particular location. And a couple of hundred people turn up and they bring things with them to trade. It is utter and complete chaos. And it is fantastic to experience. Um, I have seen people trade objects for a song or a story when they were trying to divest themselves of excess. Uh, there is a young man every year who goes and trades for sandwiches and snack foods that he brings, which his mom helps him out with. And the event runs about four hours mm -hmm. so it's it's nice to have that resource so i traded him a dragon for lunch nice that's adorable it's a lot of fun 
Um, I have gotten trim garb, mead, food quality, lavender buds, which I'm using with tea right as tea right now. Um, I got peanut brittle one year. It was excellent peanut brittle. <laughs> so how long has Barter Town been going on? Because I just started hearing about this recently. It has been going on, I think, eight or ten years at this point. Obviously, there was that gap in the middle of things. Right, right, of course. And... So uh, not including that gap, I think about six years, seven years. Yeah, a couple of my campmates go every year. They seem to really like it. <laughs> it's it's a lot of fun, even just to walk around. I I get the feel of like a what I think in my head a medieval marketplace might have been. Hmm. With everybody shouting and happy to see each other. And, oh, yes, I've got this. Have you got this item? Oh, no. Well, I want this that the other person has, but they want what you, and they'll do a three or four direction trade. Uh, it's it's a blast. It's exhausting, but it's a blast. And some people don't take a table. They bring a wagon with them and they go through so that everything is sort of portable. Some people prefer to be centered around a table. Yeah, and I would want to be around a table. I have things I'm thinking, like I have this pile of, you know, I mean, 30 years in the SCA and I just have this pile of things that I just, you know, I, I didn't work out and had the best right. of intentions for them, but not my persona, not my thing. So I'll have to definitely keep an eye out for it this year. It's a lot of fun. It is normally the middle Monday, the, the Monday of War Week. Okay. From about noon to four. And there's a really fun raffle. You put in an item, you get a ticket. When your number is called, you get to go up and choose from the table of everything that people have gotten a ticket in exchange for. Well, that's fine. <laughs> and one year I was the second number called and I got that bottle of mead. That's awesome. <laughs> Somebody, to, all they had with them was mead. They donated a bottle of mead. Um, one year I got an outfit that actually happened to fit one of the newbies in our camp. So I just gave it to her. She didn't have a lot of garb. Oh, perfect. And it, it really was. And she still wears it. Uh, this is... I. I think that was the first year I went. So it's been a while and she still wears it. She loves it. At least as far as I know, she still wears it. She did last time I saw her. Fiona, do you All have right. any I, questions for Jenna? I, I do because I am one of those people that don't know as much. So Uskard, where is that? Uskard is New York City and the boroughs. All right. and, okay, so not too far from me. That's what I was asking. <laughs> okay. Um, so yeah, New York City and the boroughs, part of Westchester okay. and Nassau County on Long Island. All right. Okay. There we go. It used and... to be all of Long Island. Uh, Suffolk County broke off and became the Barony of On de Begin. Okay. <laughs> I started out there. I'm I, my story is that I moved because I couldn't spell it, and I'm sticking to that story. <laughs> Perfect. But that's a and, huge amount of space for space. one group. And a lot of people in there. <laughs> so my understanding is that historically, the reason it's called the Crown Province of Ustgard was apparently way back at the beginning all of the lands of the East were part of the crown province and you had to live within those boundaries in order to become king and queen. Okay. I could be wrong. It could be a legend, but I love the story. Right. And, and like I said, that was my understanding. And over time, on to begin, broke off the groups in Connecticut, Barony Beyond the Mountain and Dragonship Haven broke off. Parts of New Jersey broke away. 
uh, rusted woodlands and the kale, I believe. So it seems like a lot of territory, but the boroughs are relatively small. The There's county, the count, it's a lot of people. <laughs> um, at one time, there was a building in Brooklyn that had so many Skadians in it, it was called the Vertical Canton. That's amazing. <laughs> I guess it never I'm, actually got registered as a canton, but it was called that. <laughs> See, like, I'm just thinking in terms of getting around in New York. Like, I am the queen of every time we would go to see. I'm from Belmore, Long Island. Oh, okay. So whenever we would go to see family, it would take so long from the minute we hit the George Washington, well, leading up to the George Washington, till we could finally park the car on Long Island. You're talking two hours. Easily. You know, to get to get that far. So I'm thinking, you know, if I'm if I'm in Belmore and there's a, an event downtown, you know, in Manhattan, that's going to take me forever to get there. Like do does your average Usgardian take the subway everywhere, take the LIRR to get around? Like how do y'all you can, I mean, God, I just think about trying to drive in New York with all my SEA Here, stuff. Uh, people do go on the subways and the buses all the time. That's hysterical. <laughs> um, I've I've heard stories about people in armor on the subway because they were going to fight practice. I, again, may or may not be legend, but um, I'm pretty sure it did actually happen. Um, I'm on Long Island. I'm in Nassau County, so I'm a driver. I tend to go where I can drive. Um, there are a lot of people who not only don't have cars, they don't have driver's licenses because you really don't necessarily need one in Manhattan and the boroughs. No, you do not. <laughs> um, so ride shares are common. Taking public transit is common. Uh, there have been a number of times where I've had somebody meet me at a specific railroad stop and I've picked them up and brought them from that point further out onto Long Island. You're very nice because I know Long Island is a pain in the neck to get to and out of. <laughs> well, I'm already here. Yeah, that's right. true. <laughs> right. So, you know, we're we're actually going to have a scola in May that is right over there on the other side of a parking lot, right next to my house. Perfect. So what's a what's a scola? A scola is an event focused around classes. Scola school. And so they're they're fairly common in this area. We have a bunch of smaller ones. Uh, we was started on to begin to interact a lot because of our proximity and the logistics of the two groups. So uh, the upcoming Scola, I locally, I will be teaching a class on making beef jerky and drying fruit. Last year, I taught a class on Kumihimo, just the simple intro class, the, the spiral pattern. So making jerky and dried fruit, is that a period study that you've done? Or is that a prep for Penzik class? It's a prep for Penzik primarily. There is historical background to it. Um, if you'd like, I can grab my class notes and talk about that more. <laughs> but it's been a while since I taught the class, so I don't have it memorized at this point. That's okay. I'm just curious about all the things you teach. What else do you like to teach? So my normal range of classes is the Penzik 101 and SCA 101. Sort of, you know, okay, I'm going to go to my first event. What to expect? Um, a little bit about pre-registration, the day itself, and sort of at the end, the wrap up and some vocabulary because we do have our own peculiar vocabulary. Um, make friends with your sewing machine. And I will be doing that as a virtual class for North Pass, the Canton of North Pass in April. 
what other classes do I teach? The one on beef jerky. I also have one on budgeting for Penzik specifically. Um, I happen to have all my class things here. Um, I have also done one on basic garb. And so I've you do mostly the, like the beginner classes just to make sure everybody knows what they're getting into. A lot of the very beginner classes, you know, get them, get it, get it started, get you going. Uh, although I had a 40 year veteran take my Panzik 101 class and learn something new. Oh, there you go. Well, that's why I love on the Penzik War, unofficial Penzik War, you know, community group on Facebook. When people always inevitably somebody asks, this is my first Penzik, what do I need to know? I never add anything because somebody always says whatever I would say, but I read the post because I never know. I never know. You know, my first event in 1993 was Penzik War. That was my very first event. So I think I know a lot about Penzik and how to prep for it and everything else. But I, you know what? There, you can always learn something from someone else. Absolutely. Absolutely, yes. It, there's a lot about it. I, I obviously don't know everything about it either. And so I always make it known that I welcome people who have experience already. Last Last year? Last year, I found out about trailer parking. Somebody in the class asked about trailer parking and one of my experienced hands that was sitting in on the class had that answer. Trailer parking as in like year round or just that for? I'm arriving with a trailer, where do I leave it? Where can I put my car and the trailer attached? Do I have to keep the trailer attached? That sort of thing. Right. right. Fair. I am so blessed that I don't have to do a trailer, but it's just me. So I've always you look been, pretty close too. <laughs> I, yeah, I'm only an hour and a half from Penzik. Lucky you. So I actually go home usually Wednesday or Thursday night of first week. I go home for the night to take a real shower and wash my and my camp master's laundry. And it's kind of nice. It was very nice and offered to wash mine as well. <laughs> I did, but she didn't take me up on it because she wanted to go hang out at the laundromat. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> Offsite air conditioning. Fair. <laughs> uh, no, I, I do uh, what a lot of Canadians do, and I go in with my laundry into the shower. What? <laughs> Wait, is that yeah. really a thing? What? It's a thing. Wait, it's what? absolutely a thing. I bring wow. a little tide in the shower with me, and I was like... <laughs> and then hang the laundry out seriously <laughs> wait no i'm not disgusted by this at all i'm just floored that that's a thing that yeah because most of the stuff you bring enough or whatever but if there's a couple of things that you want to wear again or it got really gross i bring a little pan so i can just do a quick wash and hang it on the tent to dry <laughs> I, I am so entitled, spoiled by living an hour and a half away because I'll just go home. I will literally just go home. So, um, uh, Fiona, I'm not quite sure where you are. For me, it's 400 miles. It's an average drive of about eight to 10 hours. I've had it take 14. So I, I'm in New Jersey and uh, it's, uh, anywhere from six to eight hours, depending. And it, we've had it go for 10 because our car was being fun. Oh, I'm sorry. With all three of my kids in the car. It was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> One of my household mates has an entire song about the events of getting to Penzik. Every year. It's got it's fun. <laughs> oh no, this this one particular year resulted in a song called The Trailer of Tears. Oh no. <laughs> so you did say in your bio that you are a bard. Yes. So how did that come into being in your life in the SCA? I don't remember quite how it started, but a group of us were singing songs 
And it evolved somehow into my being the ringleader of a group called Hell's Bells. <laughs> we had a reputation as being the East Kingdom's worst bardic group. We would make up in volume, cleavage, and enthusiasm what we lacked in ability. Perfect. <laughs> we were we were loud, we were silly, we were having a good time. Uh, and life happened, various members of the group moved away, moved out of the area, moved out of kingdom, and I've kept singing. I, I enjoy filk very much. Um, I, I tend to sing fun and silly just because I enjoy it. And I also storytell a little bit. And uh, it's, it's just fun. It's also another way to meet more people. Right, right. Absolutely. Bardic circles. Everybody's your friend at one of those. Absolutely. And at right now, there's some ongoing ones online. Yeah. So you don't even have to be physically close to where they are to participate. Um, okay, so let's get to it. Where does the name Jenna Child Slayer, Slayer. come from? That, that was one of my questions. <laughs> so <clears throat> I, I shall tell it in the traditional manner. No shit, there I was. <laughs> I was at my third event. I had a bow and a set of three mismatched arrows. And the archery marshals wouldn't let me shoot. Mismatched arrows are a safety hazard. I got sent off on a quest to borrow arrows from somebody. So I'm short. I have a, a draw length of about 27, 28 inches, but I'm pulling a 50 pound bow. So Finding somebody with a bow, uh, with arrows that are the right weight to match is my quest. It took me a little while. I did finally find a, a kind gentle by the name of Magnus who was willing to lend me arrows. Magnus, however, is six foot four with arms like a gorilla. Just long, long arms, huge draw length. He hands me these two by fours. I take them, go trotting back to the marshals with arrows, which they approved. They gave their blessing. I missed the warm-ups. I missed royal rounds. There was a novelty shoot about to take place. Innocent bystander shoot. A shepherd and his sheep, the shepherdess and their child, and behind them, the dragon. And the innocent bystanders were out two feet or so apart, you have to shoot between them, hit the dragon. Innocent bystanders, right, okay, great. My turn comes, I straddle the line, knock an arrow, draw, let fly, and hit the kid square between the eyes. <laughs> Turned around, took about a thunderous applause, <laughs> finished my remaining two shots, Got a dishonorable mention in court for the only negative score of the day and the name Child Slayer. That's so awesome. <laughs> That's a great story. <laughs> you can't beat the no shit stories. <laughs> now, are you and Magnus friends to this day? We're in intermittent contact. Um, he moved out of the area a couple of years ago. I uh, haven't really heard much from him since then but you know nothing other than just sort of life moving people around right right yeah yeah so there was another um no shit there i was and i keep trying to pull it up and i keep pulling up the wrong thing um i have way too much stuff open on this computer <laughs> um so you say um you're a 14th century generic wench. Yes. So tell me how that came into being. I kind of went at things sideways. When I chose my name, I chose one that had a sound combination that I was likely to answer to. It's a little bit similar to my mundane name. So Guinevere goes to Jeanette, goes to Jenna. 
So I was already using Jenna. And I'm sorry, the how did I end up with the 14th century persona? Wench, yes. Wench. Um, so Jenna is 14th century-ish, according to the source that I was using at the time. And so that's where I got the 14th century from. And the garb that I started out in, my very first event, was wench garb. And when I needed more garb to go to other events and to go to Penzik, wench garb was relatively quick and easy to make. That it is. And not very expensive and looked good. So that's what I wore for years. And I just sort of went with it. <laughs> um, it has no negative connotations to me. Wench is just another word for woman. Is there, wait, is that a thing? <laughs> is that that people think that there's negative connotations about the term wench? Am I missing something politically correct here? Uh, I I've think it's it. more, I think it's more the movie concept, you know, the, the guy in the tavern, hey, wench, blah, 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 you know? Yeah, it's more mundane people believe yeah. that kind of thing. Really? <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I'm learning so much. I know you're going to end up at uh, <laughs> dressing as a wench at the uh, trading post. <laughs> 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 Barter town in my wench apparel. There you go. <laughs> Why not? Um, okay, Fiona and I keep asking questions. Go ahead and ask a question. Oh my goodness. You put me on the spot. I can't do this. <laughs> you're you writing them down. I know I was writing some down. <laughs> so what it has been your favorite class so far? You said you have all kinds of classes that you go to every year. What has been your favorite class? My favorite class. Oh. I'm not really sure that I can choose just one because I I mostly go to the hands-on classes, but I've also gone to a bunch of the academic type classes. Uh, I, I took a class on Baba Yaga that I enjoyed. Mm. Um, oh, that's fun. I went to an event in Delaware. That year it was called The Pointless War. I think it generally had another name. It was one of those cold, chilly, damp October weekends. And it was drizzly and it was yucky. And I started chatting with the blacksmith and he mentioned that this is a teaching forge. And I went, cool, I'd like to learn about blacksmithing. So I spent my whole afternoon nice to the next toasty warm forge learning how to make a thing. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> so, you know, that was definitely up there in, in the classes I've enjoyed. I I don't think I could really pick a favorite. I, I've liked a lot of them for very different reasons. Is there any favorite craft that you've made or something that you've done that you we were like, okay, I have to, other than that one class that you said you've gone back to? Like, what, <laughs> yeah, I, I keep going back to that one. Um, I like the glass bead making, the lamp work beads. That, that's another one. There, there was one year I took a whole bunch of those classes. That was sort of my focus that year. And that was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed that. In general, my heart always goes back to pottery. That's my love. I love pottery. <laughs> Wait, do they teach pottery at Penzik? Do they have? Yes. I know I haven't. I know. You know I'm not a class person. <laughs> what? There's a group that builds a kiln every year on site. I have seen them do that. I've definitely yeah. seen that. So... I mean, un unfortunately, this is one of the few pieces I have left that I made, um, and it's it's got a fatal crack in it. But oh, this this oh, is beautiful. I don't know if you nice. I don't, yeah, absolutely. It's not focusing well, unfortunately. It's got this beautiful sort of warm honey colored glaze, which is just a clear glaze over the clay itself is what lends it the color. Um, so I, I have a bit of a background in pottery, so that's sort of always my, my thing. And I built 
with the help of my father, a potter's wheel and entered that in the mud thaw event ANS because what better for a mud themed ANS than a potter's wheel. Exactly. And mud thaw is coming up. Fiona, isn't that in, in, Feb in March? It's in March, February? yeah. And uh, the fourth? No. It was going to be think... after Eric's surgery. or Yeah, it was going to be uh, after Eric's surgery. So I think like the 20, it was that the weekend, the first 20 kind of weekend right there. 24th, 25th, something like that. Something okay. like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. now they're going because they moved the surgery. Uh, so... Yeah, so I, I tend to go back to the pottery. I am working on getting a functional studio put together. And yes. So when you started, it said you said in your bio that you were a merchant when you first started. What did you say? Was it pottery that you saw? Pottery. It was pottery. Oh, cool. All right. <laughs> uh, I had a mundane business doing that at craft fairs and stuff. And when I got involved in the SCA, it just, it transitioned over very nicely, very easily. Very and cool. I enjoyed it. I was mostly doing local events. And so my friends would come and sit with me behind the table and we'd chat and they would, you know, go on their day and other people would come by and I was selling things because otherwise you sort of end up drowning in what you've made after a while. And I enjoyed doing it. <laughs> so why'd you give it up? Medical. Um, I had I had some medical stuff going on and a lot of things that I liked to do were affected. And then I was transitioning um, uh, not not so much employment as career fields. And so that also affected things. So I'm I'm trying to get back into the pottery and building that potter's wheel. Um, it's a treadle rather than a kick. Are you familiar with the offset camshaft of a treadle sewing machine? Yes. <laughs> okay. No. <laughs> so the shaft that drives the treadle sewing machine is straight and then it's got this bump to it okay and so the attachment to that bump is what drives the flywheel which drives the machine okay i've taken that and turned it 90 degrees so instead of driving a sewing machine needle i'm driving the head of a potter's wheel around and around and it'll definitely go faster because you're not kicking at your um kind of it's not so much a question of faster it's just a different method okay i i can get a kick wheel i i have a kick wheel as well i can get that thing going pretty fast <laughs> um the offset shaft requires a lighter flywheel which is one of the advantages to it, which means it speeds up and slows down that much faster as well if you stop pushing. So is it giving you like different kinds of pottery and stuff like that then? Is like, it, or it? Not really. It's it's just a difference in how much you can do before you've got to spin it up again. Uh, on the treadle wheel, my leg just keeps pushing the pedal to drive it kind of on its own. I don't pay attention. Once I get the leg started, it just does its own thing. I don't have to pay attention to it. Um, unless I want to speed up or slow down. The kick wheel, I tend to get it up to speed and stop kicking while I work. And when it slows down, I've got to kick it again. And then it slows down from the friction. I have to kick it again. Well, good luck on that. I mean, I'm really excited to hear how that all turns out for you once you get back into making pottery, because there's this this joy that's in your face that was not as prevalent when you were talking about other crafts. I mean, you still were excited about other things, but the, the joy that's just shining right now from pottery. It's it's a thing. And I, I do have a BFA in ceramics. 
Oh. Yeah. So it's really a thing for me. Not oh, just I pottery, but just working with clay. I'm sorry? Where do you get a BFA in ceramics? <laughs> um, at any art school that has one. Okay. <laughs> uh, I, I went to the University of Hartford Hartford Art School. Um, so one of the things that I've noticed with guests that we have on the show, for some reason, they seem to have this, this joy in helping newcomers to the SCA. And you, you are once again, another guest who has this amazing ability to welcome newcomers to the SCA. Are you your group Chatelaine or have you been a Chatelaine? Never. You just... It's it's a thing I do. Um, the SCA is by and large people, and more people should mean more fun. Right. Also, I had reached a point when I had all the the medical stuff going on and some other things where. Sorry, I was trying to answer a question. <laughs> oh, it's okay. Not not that I didn't have fun in the SCA, but what I could do had changed. And I missed the merchanting. I missed doing the archery. Working with newcomers let me see the SCA through those new eyes again. And gave, like, freshened it up and brought that joy back and it still does nice and it's not just newcomers um there have been a couple of folks who have been transplants that i've helped along because interkingdom anthropology is very much a thing oh yeah yeah and i think the only thing harder than being a newcomer is probably changing kingdoms because you've you've got all the garb you've got all the equipment you you've got the stuff and you've kind of know what you're doing but you don't know the people and they don't know you and just walking up to somebody who looks a little lost and saying hey i haven't seen you around before can make a huge difference for someone yeah well bless your heart that is so awesome that you do that i really respect that um There's fiona do you have any other that. questions uh, I think I was good. <laughs> good? I mean, yes. I think I got all my questions. <laughs> okay. So then it's time for the final question. <laughs> what can the SCA do better, Jenna? Listen and communicate. That is the thing I see over and over and over again. We're, again, we're a society, we're people. Listening to people, whether it's something that they're having a problem with or something that they're joyful about, it's important. If somebody says there's a problem, acknowledging it, if you can't directly help, maybe pointing them in a direction that could be helping. But more important than the helping is really listening. People need to feel acknowledged. Mm -hmm. And we're, we're a shrinking membership. And we need to listen to what the people who are coming in and want to participate need, what they're looking for. We're not the only game in town anymore. We can be a lot of fun, but we're not the only game in town. And if people don't find what they want with us, they will go elsewhere. Amen. So true. All right. Well, thank you so much, Jenna. It has really been a delight. I can't even believe that it's been 50 minutes since we started talking. <laughs> it feels like 10. It feels like 10. Um, thank you, Jenna. Thank you so much for being our guest tonight. It's been wonderful talking with you. 
thank you for inviting me. This this has been a lot of fun. Yes. All right. You have been watching Simply Skadian. No title required. I'm Zof. That's Fiona. We are your co-hosts tonight. And uh, once again, if you're interested in being a guest on the show, or if you know somebody who should be a guest on the show, please go to our Facebook page. Just look for Simply Skadian, no title required. The very first uh, item on that page is our pinned form to recommend somebody to be on the show. And I am avidly searching for more guests, especially people that are from different kingdoms besides the mid and the east because that's where we live. So we love people from other kingdoms besides where we live. Um, so please recommend, I'd love my, our dream one day is to get somebody from Lockack on the show. That would be like incredibly <laughs> awesome. All right, you have been watching Simply Skadian, no title required, and we will see you in two weeks. <laughs>